session. Thank you very much, Dr. Ajay Paul. It's not only a great friend, a great surgeon, and it's a pleasure to be rather a prestige to be in his course. So when the lens is displaced from its normal position, but remains in the pupillary area, it's subluxated. But when the lens is completely displaced from the pupillary area, it's either anteriorly dislocated or posteriorly dislocated, and you need to plan your action accordingly. Again, it's important for us to know what are the clock hours of dialysis which you are able to perceive, because you also need to know that Beyond what you perceive, the damage actually might be more when you start operating, but then you need to start planning how you're going to address these. So you need to know what is the degree of zonulopathy, and then you need to know the pathophysiology. Is it a progressive zonulopathy or is it a non-progressive, which would make you less, more conservative than a very radicalized approach? And of course, it depends on the experience of the surgeon. So when you think of lensectomy, you wonder whether you're going to do in the limbal route or the pass planar, and what are the choices of IOLs like AC, IOL, or Isis clip or SFIOL. But if you're planning to do a phaco emulsification in the bag, it all comes to how are you going to stabilize the bag. So then in the basic thing which you need to understand in the air when you have dialysis is there's going to be a pseudo elasticity which is added on. So it becomes a challenge making a rexis. You need to have a cohesive viscoelastic on the anterior capsule of flap. You need to start your dialysis uh, rexis from the area of intact zonules. You need to ensure that the rexis would be centered if the capsular bag is fixated to the scleral wall. And then it's also important that after creating some amount of rexis, you could actually insert capsule retractors to ensure that you're able to make a nice round rexis. But however, if you were to use a femtosecond laser surgery, these issues of counter resistance are not necessary. But if it is a very grossly subluxated cataract, it does not make a sense to use a femtosecond laser. As I'd earlier said, that stabilization of the capsular bag is either with iris hooks, which gives an anteroposterior kind of a support, or a CTR or a hemat segment or a capsular hook, which will give you a more larger equatorial support. I'm going to take you through surgeries. Now you can see there's at least three to four clock hours of dialysis, a dense cataract, not much of epinucleus. So I'm going to place a capsular hook to provide the equatorial uh, support. And then I'm going to, um, uh, sorry, the anteroposterior support. And then I'm going to push in my CTR through the side port. And I'm going to keep a second instrument to you see that towards the end the CTR insertion, I'm able to hook it and push it into the capsular bag so that it's not overlying the furnaces and it does not centralize the bag. It is not buttressing the bag. It is not supporting it. Now, I should also do a good hydro to ensure that the nucleus is freely rotating. That should not increase the area of dialysis with more manipulations. I should also ensure that I do not make the anterior chamber get too shallow at all because that would increase the area of dialysis. I should keep my parameters quite low See, the ease of hydro allows me to rotate, but I have to do it all gentle. Low flow parameters, very gentle manipulation. But in these kind of hard cataract, it's also important that I ensure that I separate the leathery fibers. Because we just keeping on doing a phaco emulsification without actual separation of the segments. You're just nowhere and you're playing in a lax bag. Although you, all you have, yes, you have a capsule hook and a CTR there. One major advantage is till the nuclear fragments are there, they keep the posterior capsule well away because it's a lax capsule. So it can get trampolining into the phaco probe. While the pieces are there, you're actually better off as long as you do not stress the capsular bag, inject enough viscoelastic, do not shallow your anterior chamber. And then when you go on to get your first fragment, you ensure that you get the right purchase of the nuclear fragment, bring it immediately into the supracapsular space and try not to do too much of work within the capsular bag. And the even early times you could do it, but as you're coming towards the end of the FACO, you need to understand that the back bag is getting a little lax because the nuclear fragments are not there to push the fragments away. So you again ensure, look at the parameters, the vacuum on the parameters have come down. And as you come to the last, piece, you have to be extremely cautious that you really do a supracapsular phacomulsification and then you need to implant the lens. Now, this is a case of significant subluxation, but a traumatic cataract. So it's not a progressive cataract. So this was done on the femto cataract platform. It was a very soft nucleus was taken off. You need to remove the cortex, but come to the area of dialysis as the last step. That's what I wanted to show that if you follow all the uh, principles of operating in a uh, subluxated cataract, 
you can continue the surgery without the subluxation increasing and then you place the CTR such that the long arm of the CTR comes to overlie the area of the maximum weakness and then implant your uh, toric iole which would keep the back stretched. You could get away with just this even in these kind of subluxation if it is non-progressive. But if it is more, then you need to have capsular bag anchoring devices. This is an older video wherein, of course, I do a good hydro. I create a centered rexus such that it's decentered here, but it is centered once you assume that a capsular bag would be attached to a scleral wall. Then I would go on to place capsular hooks, which are going to give the support. Because when you place a CTR initially, the nuclear manipulation, the cortex removal, everything becomes a challenge. So you could keep the capsular hook on in some cases and not place the CTR right away. And then here a CONE, threaded CONE segment is being placed. You need to ensure that the eyelet comes to overlie the area of maximum weakness. Remove your capsule hooks after that. Position your intraocular lens into the bag. And then this, uh, now you could do a Hoffman's walker. At that time, I created a scleral a triangular flap. And then you go on to your routine railroading technique and suture the eye, uh, uh, capsular bag to the scleral wall, remove the viscoelastic, suture, uh, close the flap, and the surgery is complete. Now, there is a roll of capsule tension segments, which are nothing but partial rings with a five millimeter radius of curvature and holes to even wherein you could insert your iris retractor and do a suture fixation. Now, this is a case of a lenticular coloboma, and then a Hoffman's pocket is being created, as you can see here. Now, I would inject a viscoelastic, a cohesive viscoelastic, it's not that critical here. I would plan my rexis, but ensure that the rexis is well away from the area of zonular weakness. I should ideally do a hydro at this point of time but I am doing it because this nucleus is soft because you could have a fluid misdirection when there is a coloboma there and then now I would go in and inject my CTR inside then after placing the CTR and positioning appropriately I would position my uh, 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 I would position my Ahmed segment in this eye as you can see I'm threading it and then I would uh, position my Ahmed segment and then suture it and close the case if it is a severe subluxation as this, it is truly severe, then what I would do is I would create a scleral tunnel as is there, and then I would remove it with vectors. The pupil is small. I just have to do a little bit of an anterior vitrectomy in these cases. And there is not need of a putting a pilocarpine in these eyes, but I would place an iris clip lens as the easiest approach. And I've made my three o'clock, nine o'clock incision. I stabilize the iris clip place it behind the iris and just tuck the haptic, the iris into the iris tissue into the haptic and do it on both sides and get done with it. But last, if it's a progressive dialysis, you might find that you're caught in a situation with the capsular bag and the IOL are all in the vitreous and then you need your posterior segment surgeon to help you get your IOL capsular bag complex and then go in place a scleral fixated IOL. So this is the way the history of a zonular weakness progresses, but there are ways to deal. If you do it cautiously, you could do it just with a CTR, CTR and a CTS, or rarely two CTS, or in an extreme situation, an iris clip lens or a scleral fixated IOL is what you would need. Thank you very much.